All right, uh, welcome back. Yeah, in the last part, I inserted my foot into my mouth, you know, saying the DNS changer flaws. Like, I forgot the Java one was later. <laughs> um, but as a result of not fully patching this flaw in 2006, in 2007, there was a Trojan that uh, was available to exploit Mac users. Say it was a security private. There was a basically. It was in a wild malware attack against Mac users. And what the Trojan did was it uh, changed the DNS settings to uh, hijack results and other things. Now, in and of itself, this isn't a particularly malicious thing. However. You know, there's no reason this technology couldn't be used really maliciously. Basically, what it is, is it's turning people and uh, redirecting where they go on the internet, whether they like it or not. And uh, this was a direct result of uh, QuickTime. And this is actually the perfect one to bring up. You know, bring up the DNS Trojan. When Mac users start talking about, oh, we have the advanced security. You have to put in a password to install stuff. It doesn't just install like it does on Windows. Okay, here's the thing. That's great and all, but that security is defeated by user ignorance. And I hate to say it, but Apple's whole marketing philosophy is on keeping their users stupid and dumb as snot. I'm not saying all Apple users are dumb. Don't bite my head off and say, you just called all Apple users stupid. No, I didn't. Some Apple users are very technical people. Some of them are your grandma, who just do what they're told. And at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference whether it's an active X pop-up that goes, Oh, we prevented this from installing. If you'd like to install it, please click here. Or, if it's the little Mac, boop, boop, the following is trying to install. Please put in your password and say OK. I'm sorry. At the end of the day, the people who click on one are going to click on the other. They're going to do it. As evident by this one. This was a fake QuickTime plugin. Basically, you'd go to site XYZ and it'd say, Oh, you need this quick time plugin to view this. You know, which isn't that uncommon a thing. Or it wasn't at the time. It doesn't work that way anymore. But, you know, same diff. So, what did most, or, or at least a percentage of users do? They went, boop, 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 And then they installed the malware. They redid their DNS stuff, then you know, started hijacking things and other stuff. I think this problem still actually exists today. Yes, you have to be stupid enough to install it, like most spyware and malware. But guess what? It exists for the Mac just like it does Windows. So when this is used as an argument to say Apple's superior, it's a load of horse hockey. Because the reality is, this is user ignorance, has nothing to do with the system. The people who do this stupid stuff in Windows are going to do this stupid stuff in OS X and are going to do it in Linux. Problem exists cross platform. Let's move forward to the thing I started talking about. May 2009. Five months after Sun told everyone to patch Java. There's a known patch. This is a problem. It could be exploited. Fix it. Windows had fixed it. All Linux builds had fixed it. It had been patched everywhere. But Apple said, Ah, oh, no, we don't need to fix that. Apparently, the fact that your system fell 
at a security conference. Yeah, usually the fall order at security conferences uh, was as follows. Windows fell a little bit later because it's more secure. OS X fell and Linux fell. The order when this exploit was found out and this vulnerability was found out because this was the thing used, this was a cross-platform problem and there are cross-platform problems. The order was as follows. Mac, Linux, Windows, because they're all vulnerable. Everyone else reacted to that and went, we need to fix this. Mac said, we can't fix this. We built our whole marketing campaign on a myth that we don't have these problems. Shh, pretend this doesn't exist. That's borderline criminal. It really is. Anyways, it was eventually partially patched in May of 2009. But, you know, it, it wasn't until that update in 6, sorry, it wasn't updated and patched until 6-15-2009. They had known for five months in May. And here's my honest opinion there. This is my opinion. I can't prove this because I don't know anyone on the Apple board. And I don't think anyone can ever prove this. The people who knew about this exploit and did the hack. You know, they worked with people. They said, here's what we did. You know, here's how you patch. Here's how you sign. They kept saying, Apple, when are you going to fix this? Apple, when are you going to fix this? Apple, when are you going to fix this? And Apple kept saying, when we feel like it, when we feel like it, when we think it's of security importance. So in May, these people said, you know what? Until this is in the wild, outside, and somebody else can figure this out, so we're going to publish how to do this. They didn't publish the sign, but they basically put up a site, which was, click on it, oh look, you're vulnerable, don't complain to Apple. And I think that's the only reason it was patched on 6.15.09. This is last year! This exploit was known about in the fourth quarter of 2008. It took them till mid-2009 to decide they should patch it. If this is the system that people say is more secure, I know this isn't many vulnerabilities, but if you're going to operate under this myth that they don't exist, here's the thing. Even if they don't understand how stuff spreads, Windows users have a healthy degree of paranoia, at least most of them do, about just clicking to accept something. You know, an ActiveX plugin or something. You know, they're like, I'm not sure I should do this. Mac Marketing told Mac users they're not susceptible. So what do they do? I'm immune. Click, click. Sure, I'm immune. Sure, I'm immune. Ah, oh, sure, I'm immune. Go ahead and put that on. As a result, I'd be willing to bet if you did a study that Mac users are ten times more likely to be exploited. Which means... The moment they become even a much larger market share, they're going to be targeted more and more and more and more. Especially if Apple keeps dragging its feet about updating stuff. When a security flaw is known to exist, that should be a high priority patch, especially if it's one that lets you largely take control of the system. Anyways, that's my thoughts on Mac viruses. For all you Mac fans who want to argue that Macs are more secure and that they don't get viruses, Go ahead, tell me why I'm full of shit and none of these viruses exist. Tell me why most viruses aren't variants. And tell me why Apple being the slowest company out of anyone to patch security flaws is a good thing for its end user's security. I want to hear that. Peace out, all.